Hello. This video is going to show how we can verify high level requirements. Now, many embedded projects have a, a number of requirements. We have some system level requirements, and these will be covered by high level requirements. And the high level requirements will be covered by low level requirements. How do we verify the low level requirements? Well, this is where basically we're going to isolate each individual function and we'll perform some unit testing. And this is what we're calling here these low level tests. And then for the high level requirements, we're going to verify these by running some high level tests. What are these? Well, basically, we're going to execute the code. We're going to drive it. We're going to send in various inputs and we'll verify the outputs from the system. At the same time, what we want to be able to do is find out, well, how efficient is our testing? In which case we want to be able to measure the structural coverage and find out how we executed every function and every branch inside the code. So let's take a look at an example. In this particular case, I've got this project here, which is a cache register, and I've got some source code. So let's go and build this source code using, in this case, the GCC compiler. That's now generated this L file. So let's now go in and run this. And I'm going to run this using the Lauterbach Trace32 simulator for the ARM. And as we can see, this simple cache register is now running. And I can exercise it, drive it, by dr putting in various inputs. So let's do an S for start, type in a barcode, and we'll do E for end. And as we can see, it prints something out. So I'm able to exercise the system and at the same time I can verify visually that it's printing out what I'm expecting. So what I'd like to be able to do is to automate this. So first of all, let's just close this down. And now let's take a look at that code that's been analyzed. <clears throat> so here I've analyzed the code and we can take a look at the system core graph. And the system core graph is showing us all the functions here and we can see how they're interconnected. <clears throat> so let's go and execute the code. But this time, let's actually instrument the code so we can find out how much of the code have we exercised. So to do that, I'm going to perform the dynamic analysis. This is now going to instrument these source files. Then we're going to perform the build, again using the, the GCC compiler. And now we can see we're executing the code exactly the same as we did before. So in this case, I'm going to do exactly the same, S for start, one, two, three, four, five, B, E for end, and we can see it's printed something out. Now I'm going to do Q for quit, that then exits the application. We can now upload the execution history. We can analyze that information. And now we're going to be able to take a look at the system core graph and find out, well, as we executed that high level test, how much coverage did we obtain? In this particular case, we can see we've got reasonable coverage. So we've got some functions for which we've got 100% statement coverage, but quite a few where we haven't got 100%. We could take a look at this particular function here. Let's take a look at a pass-fail flow graph. And in this particular case, we can see very clearly that we've only executed this particular path through the code. So we obviously need to exercise uh, with some more inputs in order to try and exercise these additional uh, statements here. Right, so let's go and execute some high level tests. So I've got a batch file here that I'm going to run. And what this is going to do is this is going to first of all delete all the existing results. It's going to then analyze the code and then it's going to perform a number of high level tests. Well, let's take a look. Let's go into the high level test folder here. And inside there, we have a, an Excel spreadsheet detailing all the high level tests that I want to run. Let's open this and let's see what we've got. So we've got, first of all, a number of tests. For each individual test, we can see we have a, a reference to the high level requirement that we're verifying. We have a name or description of the test. And then we have a number of files. And basically, what I want to be able to do is to execute each of these tests, and instead of me typing things in, I want to read from this file, capture what happens to that file, and then compare that file with the, the reference here. So let's go and take a look at some of these 
files. So as we can see, we've already executed one test that's passed. And now we're executing the next test. So let's take a look at the one we've just executed here, cancel session. So if we go into here, we can see we have a, an input file. And if we edit that, we can see these are the inputs that I want to apply. And so automatically, when we execute the code, it will read the inputs from here. We can see the queue will actually ex exit the program at the end. And let's take a look at the output. So in this particular case, we can see we have the output. Let's edit that. And that is the output that occurred. And let's compare that to the actual reference of what I'm expecting to happen. And again, we can open this and now we can compare the basically what happened with what we expected. And as we can see, the output is exactly the same. And that's why the test passed. Let's now take a look at uh, another test. Let's take a look at this one here. And in this particular case, let's edit this. Let's make it fail. So I'm going to go into here instead of putting an N for coconuts. Let's put a, a, a little K in there and save that. All right. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to fast forward towards that test because it's going to save a little bit of time. Right. So now we can see it's run the 15th test. It's now starting to run this test that we just modified. And so what we should see is this test is going to fail. And there we can see it failed. Well, why did it fail? Let's go and take a look at what actually happened. And there, if we open this and now we compare these, we should be able to see that there is a difference. And as we can see, I modified this and put a, a K instead of a C. So I'm just going to put that code back as it was. And let's close this down. Right. So now we can see this is carrying on. It's now doing the last test. This one has passed, and so it's now going to open a report where we're going to be able to see the status of everything we've done so far. So there we can see we've now got this HTML document, and as we can see, 94% of our tests have passed. So we have one that's failed that's highlighted here in red. So all the tests have run. So let's take a look at the coverage we've obtained from running all the high-level tests. So we have a test manager report. Let's go and hyperlink to that. And in this particular case, we've got the code review report, quality review report. I'm not particularly interested in that today. It's more the dynamic report that I want to see. And as we can see, we have 100% coverage for some of these functions. Let's take a look at this one here. We've only got 99% statement coverage. Well, let's go and take a look. Here we can see all the high level tests that we've run. And if we scroll down, we're able to see we've got 100% coverage, except for this user interface pass. So why is that? Well, let's take a, a closer look. Here we can see we've executed every line of code except for this one. And basically, when we've been typing things in, we've added in a backslash R. We've never actually back typed in a backslash N. So effectively, that is dead code. And that line of code here could actually be removed from my project. Let's go back and let's take a look at another place where we haven't got 100% coverage. That's in the product database. Let's enter that. Again, we can see all the tests that have executed. And in this particular case, we can see the function where we haven't got 100% coverage. Let's go and take a look at that. And in this particular case, we can see we've ever ex executed this line of code where on line 85, we're setting the CP to a value of null. Why haven't we executed that? Well, this is typical defensive programming. In this particular case, this function is taking uh, an argument that's an index. And the program is using that index inside an array. And so, of course, it's testing that the index is less than the maximum before it actually uses it. And it's never actually going to be outside of that range. But that is still good practice to make sure that it is outside that range before we use it. And that's why this effectively is code that's not been executed. It's not dead code, but it's code that I could effectively verify uh, using unit testing. So as we can see, that was line 85. Now let's go back and let's take a, another look at the results. <clears throat> In this particular case, let's take a look at a dynamic data flow 
coverage report. Again, we have a, a hyperlink. And if we take a look at this and scroll down, in this particular case, we're able to look at all the variables inside our code. And for each variable, we can find out what file it's in, what function it's in. Is it a parameter? Is it a global? We can see, is it actually declared or, or referenced? And we can see the line numbers where those variables are actually used. We've also color coded these line numbers in green to indicate these have all been executed. And if I scroll down a bit further, we come to one here highlighted in red, and that's line 85 in productdatabase.c, where we can see the counted product is actually given a value on line 85, and we haven't executed that. So that's a, another view of effectively understanding what parts of the code have we ex executed and which parts have we not executed. So there, very rapidly, is a quick overview of performing high-level tests. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.